Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be a quick one and we're going to be talking about performance related altitudes. We will look at service ceiling, absolute ceiling and the optimum altitude. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing if you find this video helpful. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Firstly, service ceiling. Well, by definition, it is the maximum density altitude at which the airplane will produce a maximum of 100 feet per minute rate of climb with all engines operating at maximum continuous power, or MCP for short. For jetliners, however, this value increases to 500 feet per minute. Well, as we know, climb performance decreases as we go higher in altitude. As we can see in front of us in the, this table, at sea level and ISA conditions, the engines produce 1,114 feet per minute rate of climb at maximum takeoff weight. However, at 18,000 feet down below here, this value drops to about 900 feet per minute only, even though power is set at maximum continuous power. And by the way, this table is out of the performance chapter of DA42 NGPOH. Now, let's dig a little bit deeper to know why rate of climb decreases with altitude while keeping it as simple as possible for ease of understanding. In terms of performance, rate of climb can be thought of as the amount of power available minus power required, or simply excess power, divided by weight. So what actually determines how fast we climb and how high we can climb is the amount of excess thrust, plus how much thrust the engine can produce at an altitude. This graph right here will help you visualize it better. Power required is simply your airplane total drag curve which is the sum of both induced drag and parasite drag. Power available is the power that your engine is able to produce. As we go higher in altitude, the air becomes thinner and thinner. And as we all know, propeller-driven airplanes are only efficient at low density altitudes. So what happens when we climb? Well, the answer is that the power that your engine can produce decreases due to the thinner air while the power required to sustain level flight increases. As the two curves close in on each other, the excess thrust decreases, and so does the rate of climb, until the altitude at which the rate of climb drops to 100 feet per minute for propeller-driven aircraft. This altitude at which this occurs is called the surface ceiling. All right, now let's talk about the absolute ceiling. By definition, it is the altitude at which the maximum rate of climb goes to zero. And it is due to the exact same reason we have discussed earlier. At the absolute ceiling, the airplane can only maintain level flight and can no longer achieve climb performance even with full power, as there no longer is any excess power left. Now, a few things to keep in mind in regards to the absolute ceiling is that we don't actually fly at the absolute ceiling. The absolute ceiling is normally tested by test pilots for the certification of the aircraft, meaning the aircraft is technically able to fly at this altitude. However, operationally, and I mean, in day-to-day -day operations, we do not climb to such altitude. Now, if you want to figure out exactly what are these altitudes for your aircraft, the best place where you need to look is the AFM, or the Airplane Flight Manual, or POH. Pilot Operating Handbook in the uh, performance chapter. Now, last but not least, let's talk about the optimum altitude. The optimum altitude. Well, before we get to the definition on all that, please keep in mind that the optimum altitude concerns turboprops and turbofans rather than propeller-driven airplanes. Okay? Now, the optimum altitude is the cruising altitude at which a given thrust setting results in the corresponding maximum range speed and specific range fuel consumption. What does that mean? It means, at this altitude, the engines are running at their most efficient RPM, or as referred to in the turbofans as N1. With other words, at this altitude, a specified thrust setting results in a speed that results in the maximum range of the aircraft, as well as the minimum fuel consumption for that range. So this altitude is almost never constant and changes due to the aircraft weight 
atmospheric conditions, and so on. Airlines urge pilots to fly at or as close to this altitude as possible because it is fuel efficient, and fuel is money. Additional key points to keep in mind about the optimum altitude uh, the optimum altitude usually lies between flight level 350 and flight level 420. And it is not constant throughout the flight, it moves up and down. Usually, it moves up depending on the change in the atmospheric conditions, as we have uh, mentioned earlier, and also as the uh, weight of the aircraft decreases as a result of fuel burn. Also, flying above or below this altitude decreases the range of the airplane. So there you have it, the service ceiling, absolute ceiling, and the optimum altitude. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this short video. If you guys have enjoyed it or you have found it helpful, kindly consider a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you are struggling with any aviation related topic and would like me to make a video about it, please leave it in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to do so. Thank you again for watching. And until the next video, see ya.